Ah, uh, rock climbing. An incredibly nerdy sport where the professional athletes can also look like they follow fish around during frisbee golf conventions. Climbing is an exhilarating test of strength, skill, and problem solving that you just can't get anywhere else, and I absolutely love it. But unlike many other sports, rock climbing at a high level depends on something your body wasn't meant to do. And that's why over a third of all climbing injuries happen right here. Why? Now entering the facility. First of all, a bit of background. As many of you who stalk me online know, I'm an avid rock climber, or I, I was until this happened, until I ruptured something in my finger. But I wasn't surprised. I was more angry than anything because this is actually the third time this injury has happened to me, each time in a different finger. Um. Then why do you keep doing that to yourself? Well, that's a thing, Arya. If you want to climb at a high level like I was, you simply have to use the technique that I was using at the time I got injured. And before you say it, no, it's not because I don't know what I'm doing. I've been climbing for over 15 years. I've worked at a climbing gym. I've trained with professionals. No, it's not that. So after being injured for the third time in the exact same way, I wanted to figure out what the heck was going on. And that led me to the physics. And the physics says why a full 33% of all climbing injuries are the exact same thing. There are a million different ways to grab a rock climbing handhold, but there are only a few ways to do it well. For large, smooth holds with few edges, the hand position is called a sloper. For thin, vertical holds, use what's called a pinch. A crimp is used for edges in the smallest handholds, and you only use a few fingers for the pocket position. Now, even if you know nothing about finger physiology, which hand technique do you think puts the most force on the smallest stuff in your hand? It's the crimp, which can be open, as you see here, or closed. Put simply, the crimp is indispensable to modern climbing. I haven't met a single serious climber in my 15 years who doesn't use it, and it works so well on small holds, you literally cannot avoid doing it. In fact, you have to do it for more difficult routes and problems. This hand and finger orientation is not found in any other sport, and as such, research has found that crimping leads to a specific injury called a pulley rupture, unique to rock climbers in its astonishing high frequency. Why? This is where finger physiology comes in. To analyze the forces causing these injuries while crimping, we begin by drawing what physics teachers call free body diagrams. These are simple diagrams of all the forces in a system. As you can see, there are two main forces, the force of your weight pulling on the rock and the force of the rock pushing back. But because there is a force on the hand that isn't acting through where the finger is touching, there is also a rotational force or torque inside of the fingers. The most important thing to know about torque is that it gets larger the further away the force that's making it is from a point of rotation. This is the same reason why, for example, a seesaw can lift you so easily. With this in mind, look at the two free body diagrams here again. Look at how much further away the force inside a crimp is from the fingertip and the handhold. This creates a much larger fingertip force and the highest torque of any hand position, which has been confirmed by scientific papers. And because friction is dependent on finger force, this high torque, high force crimp is simply the best way to grab small holds. However, as we said at the beginning of this video, climbing like this comes at a cost. How long have you been climbing for? Since 2011, so 11 years. Have you ever had an injury in your hand? Yes. I'm still getting over it. It's like kind of a twinging finger pain. I don't know exactly. It's not been diagnosed. Right in the base there? Those two segments of the finger. I also had a pulley injury right there three different times. Really? Yeah. Have you ever had any injuries? Um, no, but I like strained like this part and I had to like stop climbing for like a week or two. Can you show me where specifically? Right here. Around the inside of your finger here? Yeah. Being an intermediate climber, do you know what crimping is? Uh, yeah, I know what crimping is. Do you use crimping a lot? Um, here and there, but not a lot. Yeah, I'm more of a person who like uses like jug holds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
crimping puts the highest forces on your fingers when rock climbing, but we haven't explained why these high forces lead to so-called pulley ruptures specifically. Well, here I have a model of your hand. Hello, I'm representing the tendons that run along the bones of your fingers with this white tape. This tendon, when activated by your muscle, pulls the finger down. But to do this efficiently and effectively, your body also has so-called pulleys, three of them per finger, which keeps your tendon close to the bone and able to be pulled down just like that. Now, the climbing literature, there is a lot of climbing literature, says that the average rock climber in a single finger may experience around 380 newtons of force. And this A2 pulley right here, closest to your palm, this A2 pulley can handle about 380 to 400 newtons of force. Great, however, in the closed crimp position, as we've been talking about, this pulley right here is routinely asked to take at least 450 newtons and sometimes much more than that. Which means this pulley right here is being constantly overloaded when crimping while climbing and is close to failure. As a comparison, doing the sloping hand position puts three and a half thousand percent less force on your A2 pulley. And so when crimping, this is why a full third of rock climbing injuries are exactly the same thing. Finger geometry and forces puts way too much force on this pulley. It's why I've injured myself in the exact same way three different times. Based on what we know about how fingers move, it's unavoidable. What if I told you that during a sloper hand position, the force is three and a half thousand percent less on your pulleys than when you're in a closed crimp position. Is that surprising to you? Not entirely, only because I've looked at the anatomy of the fingers a lot, and I know that like, like a lot of the force you're generating like a closed hand position is like happening in the middle of the finger. Mm -hmm. I told you climbers were smart. <laughs> Do you know anyone else who's had finger problems like you're having? Yeah, I've had a bunch of friends who've had uh, finger injuries similar to mine in the past, for sure. Yeah, in fact, we are like dealing with them right now. So. This took me a year to get over. Yeah. What do you do when you had your hand injury? What did you do to rest? Um, just to stop using this hand, I would probably use these three fingers more, like going routes with more of like hands like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have friends that rock climb as well? Yeah, I do. Have they had any hand or finger problems through you? Yeah, one of my friends recently like pulled his hand, um, and so he had to like tape his hand right here. Right here? Yeah, right there. <laughs> 33% of all rock climbing injuries are right there. Does that surprise you? No, not at all. I've seen so many rock climbers with like tape at the same location. So that doesn't surprise you at all? No. I told you. One of the most used and effective climbing techniques is almost physically determined to injure human fingers. So what's a climber to do? Well, unfortunately, I don't really have a good answer for that. It's akin to the concussion problem in football. As long as people are gonna hit each other in the head, concussions will happen. As long as climbers wanna climb hard, they're going to crimp and they're gonna injure their fingers. I guess what I wanna get at today is some general education. No one told me about the dangers or possible dangers of crimping when I started climbing. And if you know the fingers, forces, and physiology, it will, and it already has, helped doctors, scientists, and trainers address this rampant problem. And if you are a climber yourself, I do have some advice. Listen to your body. Don't climb on sore fingers. Even though climbing is very addictive, take rest days. Strength train so you know how to efficiently move. And if you already had a pulley injury or you're worried about it, make sure you support your pulleys with external tape like I am doing now. As for me, I'm off to create some friction safely. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to have access to the members only discord, if you want to see videos early, if you want to have monthly private live streams with yours truly, not like that. 
You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and sign up for the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week. It's a grand privilege. And as you can see, so many of you have it, hundreds and hundreds. I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the test. Rock climbing seems like a disproportionately nerdy sport. I don't know exactly why, but I have an idea. So many of science communicators that you know that are my friends, like the physics girl, like Alan Pan, we all rock climb. And I know so many engineers and scientists who also climb. I think it has something to do with the fact that it's numbers based. So you can go in uh, one day and say, oh, I'm climbing a five instead of a four. I've gotten better. You can see real progress that you can put numbers to. And it's an individual sport that takes your mind off of anything else that involves problem solving. So you can just put in your headphones, not talk to anyone ever and quantify your results while getting in shape. That's nerd fit, baby. Thanks for watching. It's still not great, but it's getting there.